<laughs> Strange Imagination, that's a great song. Yeah, that's, um, I don't know, I had this great riff, a powerful sort of riff, and um, had some fun with some lyrics. <laughs> Party Boys, um, what was, how'd that all happen? That was uh, an idea, Paul Christie had an idea. Paul used to play bass for me when, we were, when I was in America and he rang me up and said, well, I got this idea to get different guys from different bands together and, and have a band and um, just put on a few shows, see how it goes. And we've got James Rain and um, Buzz Bitstrip, um, Harvey James and myself and um, Paul playing bass. And we did the Moby Dicks surf club and packed it out about three nights in a row and um, over the phone when he was telling me he said well, we just want to have a party atmosphere and I saw and he said we'll call it the wow boys or something like that you know and I said oh well we should call it the party boys so we went with that and um, uh, it was so successful that he kept uh, generating different ideas and getting different people in from uh, Richard Clapton, Mark Hunter, Shirley Strawn did uh, albums with, with those people and it was just a great formula and no one had done Joe it before. Joe Walsh? Joe Walsh come, came out, he was the first international guy that um, came out and Paul said he had him come out and I thought no way you get someone like that to come out all the way but sure he just walks off the plane, comes and you know stays, we had, had him put up at some flash joint and he rang up and goes, uh, hey Kev, uh, you got a couch? I said, yeah. He said, no, I'm going to come and stay with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, he slept on my couch on there. It's a very famous couch. Excellent. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's really down to earth and, uh, you know, a bit eccentric and in a wonderful way. We had a tour and we had to drive for about five hours. And we all went, oh, I went, OK, yeah, sure. And Joe goes, yeah. He says, yeah, I'm too rich to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the only time he uh, so really he flew. Yeah, he flew. So this is your new album you're working on? Yeah. And you do it all here? You record everything here and...? Yeah, I'm, I've done everything so far. This is the first time I've used this facility, so I'm not sure about the mixing yet. We're gonna, we, but we do all the tracking, like the drums in there. I've got guitar amps here and speakers in a couple of different rooms. And that's how I did the tracking. The mixing, we're going we're gonna to attempt the mix and um, see how, how far we get with that and then maybe take a couple of tracks to a real posh studio and see what the difference is and if there's a lot of difference I'll, I'll mix it in, in a specialized environment. I can't live. It ain't no fun anymore. But it must make life easy to be able to record oh, all yeah. your stuff at home. Oh it's so great because you're not watching the clock and, and um, I remember doing tracks and, and, and my manager at the time pacing up and down like you know <laughs> like mm. this. But here we can um, we can we can really we can really take it our own time and, um, and pick the eyes out of the good stuff and uh, it's more relaxed. No pressure. Well, it's it's fun. Yeah. There's no dollar over your head. You yeah. Know? Baby, baby, won't you listen no more? I was wrong. Baby, baby, won't you listen no more? Now you're gone. Baby, baby, won't you listen no more? So it's a bit of everything on the new album? Pretty much, yeah. Like, you know, it's rock, funk and blues and, um, and one country number. Nowadays when you're playing with the Express, is, is, like a, is that the sort of thing that they get? Is it like a mixture of all types of music? Yeah, well, when I went to the States, I, I had an album planned out and we, and we did the tracks and, and they kind of had a bit of trouble selling it because all the record company guys were going, you know, well, there's a heavy track there and then there's a funky track and then there's a South American influence. I mean, are you schizophrenic or, or what? Which box are we going to put you in? And so it didn't really help me, but I mean, I, I, I write stuff and I like different types of music, so I write it and if I like what I've written, I'll end up playing it if it goes with the people. So it's a whole smorgasbord of the geek? 
Und so Schmorgesbeut. So tell us about that American tour. That, that must have been a, a, an, an interesting experience. Uh, yeah, it was an interesting experience because um, basically we went there because we'd done it around here so much and you know people getting bored with me I guess. And we just I just wanted to go somewhere else and play and see what the reaction would be from mm. someone who didn't know who Kevin Boris was. And um, we went over there. We didn't do any everything right at all. We we went over there and. Um, Stayed at Agura, a place about uh, 40 minutes out of LA, and tried to write new stuff. And we were slaving away in the in the lounge room, and we'd had all the gear set up, and we'd, we'd be in there playing. And we'd look out the window, and there'd be the roadies that we took, and the gear we took everything. And the roadies would be swimming in the pool, and I'd be going, I don't know if this is, I don't think this is right. <laughs> I'm in here slaving. The roadies are having a great time, and I thought I must be paying for it. <laughs> so, um, you know, then we got a gig. Chuggy walks in and goes, we got a gig, great. And we, um, where is it? Detroit. Right, so it's four days drive. <laughs> but he did, he did uh, ACDC, let us uh, uh, get on the bill for them when they did the Starwood Club. They were just about to break over there. Bomb was still mm. alive, it's the last time I saw him. And we supported them at the um, Starwood Club. Just the one night? Yeah. Yeah, and, um, and they were just about to break, you know. And we did a tour, people liked us, but you know, we just didn't have the business end together and, and support money-wise and that. So then just came home and back into it here? Luckily the pub scene was ripe and we could pay the bills. Kevin's wife Melissa juggles a successful modelling career with being a busy mother of three. So Melissa, tell me about living with Kevin. Kevin, you've kept, gosh, how can I sum that up in, how long have we got? Oh, hours. <laughs> <laughs> hours and where, hours. Where do I start? Oh, he's an easy person to live with. He's a darling. And, and do the kids understand what Dad does? Do they know what, what he's off there entertaining the hordes? Oh, yeah, I think they do. And they've sent him on a few things now. They're starting really to. You've lovely. made a few comments. Yeah. yeah, and they've heard you on the radio and they get really excited. And Yeah, Can Mum, is Dad really famous? And how old are the kids? The twins are six, Holly and Chloe are six, and Eli's four. So, where did you, how did you guys meet? How did we meet? Oh, that was such a long time ago. We met through a mutual friend. So, is it difficult when Kev's away with the kids and, and you're having to cope with them by yourself? Is it hard? Well, we've been together a long time now, so I'm, I was very used to Kevin going away. You know, I didn't like it, but you mm. get used to it. And I had my work, I had my career, so I was always busy and you have your circle of mm. friends. And then you get a small family. And I think it just takes another dimension. I think I miss Kevin even more now because mm. it's really lovely having him around with the kids. Did you know he was a rock star? Yeah. Did you know who Kevin yeah. Burridge was? I no. didn't actually. Didn't you? No, I didn't. So did you like Kevin's stuff? Did you enjoy his music? <laughs> oh yeah, I loved his music. I thought it was great. So there you have it, Kevin's journey so far. 30 years on, Kevin Borridge is still one of the best live acts in the country. Make sure you get along to a show. Next week on The Journey, the real thing, Russell Morris. I'm Tony Southwell. Go check out an Aussie band.